Welcome to the Brave Space Client Rights Training. This training is all about what our clients are entitled to when they start services here at Brave Space. All clients, when they enter our services, are entitled to receive our informed consent document, the notice of HIPAA privacy practices, a professional disclosure statement of the provider they are working with, and a copy of their client bill of rights and the grievances process. Providers who are conducting intakes will provide these documentation at their first session with the client. Most of these documents are also available upon request and are hanging in the Brave Space office for clients to review them. Please feel free to watch the other video called Informed Consent Training if you'd like to see how to do an informed consent process with a new client. A few of the pieces that we like to call out in Brave Space informed consent processes are the experience of dual relationships in our community. Because we work in a small community, clients may have friends who also see a provider at Brave Space. Um, clients may have a partner who's seen, being seen at Brave Space. And providers may have several clients who may know each other in some capacity. What we ask clients to do to help us stay objective is to limit their use of names during session so that we can have a more objective experience. We also let them know that if we ever run into them in, in the community, that we will always follow their lead in, in disclosing what we know about them. That can include how much we say hi. We'll always let the client make the first move. The other part about dual relationships in small communities is that many of our clients may sometime be our colleagues. We may attend um, advocacy groups that are similar. We may attend support groups together. So it's important to notify clients of these expectations up front so that a fewer of us are surprised if that ever does happen. Because we are a hub of transgender and non-binary care, we also may collect uh, client data at any given time for research purposes. We do have a clause in our informed consent that indicates that we collect client information and that we may use it for research purposes. All of this information is in aggregate form and is confidential. We also like to let clients know about our drug and alcohol policy. Brave Space understands that drugs and alcohol are used to help cope with some of the symptoms experienced by community. Therefore, we don't have a hard and fast sobriety clause. What we do ask is that the clients manage their use so that they can still engage in practice. If their use is starting to impact other clients in the area or the, the clinician, we, we will talk to the client about changing their date of service, talking about their use, or seeing if there's any other supports that we can provide to help manage those kinds of dynamics. So when discussing informed consent with minors, many of the clients seeking care at Brave Space are in a very interesting place with talking to their parents about their gender identity. Therefore, we don't hold a hard and fast rule about engaging parents. The age of informed consent for mental health in Oregon is 14. And so if a 14 year old or older person engages care, we will not enforce clients to, to engage their parents, but we will talk to clients about why they're excluding their parents. We'll also offer support in family therapy. One of the biggest things that we can do at Brave Space is help to heal some past wounds and help families have a more open and honest dialogue. We have seen that lots of families who engage at Brave Space do come to a new sense of connection and understanding after having some of our support. And sometimes the work is to help clients um, believe that that is maybe a possibility for their family. Client confidentiality means that as providers, we will not share their health information unless they give us permission to do so. This stands for anyone over the age of 14 or a parent guardian if the person is under 14. There are some exceptions to confidentiality. If the person signs a release of information and allows us to share their information, that's an appropriate disclosure of information. If the person has indicated suspected abuse or neglect, if there's a subpoena by a court, if the person's information is requested by their parole officer, if the person is in imminent danger to themselves or is, has threatened danger to another person, 
and if it's a minor, that their parent can access records as well. We also like to talk to underage clients about privacy with their parents. Having some privacy in session is sometimes beneficial for young people to open up to their therapist. So we do ask for parents to have some discretion when asking what's happening in session. We also like to talk to minors about any kinds of gray areas that they share with us, like risky sexual conduct, drug use, running away, other kinds of things that could threaten their livelihood. We may talk to their parents without their consent. Oftentimes it's helpful to have a dialogue with the family altogether about these kinds of conversations up front and then continue to have ongoing informed consent if you start to hear things from your clients that may require a report or, or disclosure to the family. Clients at Brave Space and in any other kind of provision space have a Bill of Rights. They are entitled to many different things um, that oftentimes therapists don't fully understand. What I would recommend is that you look over this document and familiarize yourself with what is a client's Bill of Rights. It's important in the informed consent dialogue to notify a client of their rights. Many clients have seen lots of therapists who have never informed them about these kinds of dynamics, and so clients don't understand that they're able to ask about these things. The same is true about their grievances process. Clients can give us feedback at any time during our process, but we also understand that there's a huge power dynamic and that it's sometimes difficult for a client to disclose to us personally if they've had something happen. So clients have a grievance process in which they can file a complaint with Brave Space, with their CCO, or with Oregon Health Authority. Again, the client and you can find the information in the informed consent document. It's important for you to familiarize yourself with both of these processes so that you can help your client understand them. Clients also have the right to sign a Declaration of Mental Health Treatment. The Declaration of Mental Health Treatment is a legal standing document which outlines the kinds of care that they would like to receive if things ever escalate. This is used for clients who are sent to psychiatric facilities, to emergency rooms, to residential or subacute settings, or people who have lost their ability to give consent. This document is very detailed and must be filled out by the client and, is re and it requires witnesses to sign it. If your client wishes to fill out this document, they can receive a copy at any time. Please just ask your clinical supervisor or myself and we can get that document to you. The last right that clients have is that they have the right to vote. And as a service provider, we will help them fill out their voting card if they request it. This is li listed on the informed consent document and the steps can be provided to you if you ever have a client who needs that. If you have any other questions about informed consent, please ask your clinical supervisor or me and we will be happy to help you. Thank you for watching the informed consent training.